So this is my second attempt at a biotic pump video. Anyway, um, much the same amount of solar energy ra uh, comes down on the Brazilian rainforest as the desert, as the ocean. And there are a couple of differences. So, one in the Brazilian rainforest, there's 40 meter high trees, pretty much extensive all the way across for a couple of thousand kilometers. In the forest, there's one to two meter, sh or in the desert, there's one to two meter shrubland. And in the ocean, it's just uh, water with varying ocean currents. Uh, on land, the biggest difference is water vapor. So over the ocean, there's uh, generally low pressure because uh, there's moisture from the ocean in the air, and moisture, uh, water vapor, uh, weighs, uh, it has a molecular weight of 18, whereas uh, dry air has a molecular weight of um, 29, and that's a significant difference. So you add wa a water vapor to air and it makes the air lighter. So in the desert, we have a temperature swing of 10 to 40 degrees. So at night it's around 10, at, um, in the daytime it's up to 40. And this means that at night there's high pressure in the, over the desert because the, um, the heat just radiates off into space really really quickly and at daytime there's uh, low pressure because 40 degrees is, it makes quite a difference to the, um, the pressure of the air um, pressure uh, is lower in response to higher temperature so we get uh, by day you're getting a sea breeze going from the low pressure over the ocean to the lower pressure over the desert and you get a kind of a circulating effect so it goes in it rises up and circulates so you get this kind of uh, uh, in the air you get this kind of a uh, water wheel I guess except there's not much water in it um, and then by night desert cools down really quickly so now it's high pressure at night and the high pressure is going towards the ocean and you get another uh, kind of swirling uh, wheel that you can't see in the air. So, so you're getting this acts as a brake, uh, so that uh, this te it takes a lot of energy to get past this little thing. And um, there's actually a fluidic valve, which uh, is just uh, has uh, a little whirlpool of water. So, so this is like a fluidic valve that stops. Uh, free movement of air. Now over over the forest it's an entirely different thing. The rainforest 40 meters high uh, uh, has eight times the capacity to um, transpire water as the ocean has to evaporate. So over the forest it's able to send water vapor up into the air eight times quicker than the ocean can. And this means that over the forest during the day there's a little bit lower pressure than over the ocean. So the, the um, moisture rises up over the forest, forms clouds at maybe three kilometers and clouds continue up until they're about 11 kilometers high. At three to four kilometers uh, is where the rain happens and when rain happens, this low pressure air, the, the water vapor is removed from uh, this whole area. Now, in I'm not sure what the effect of clouds are. One effect is definitely that their clouds form a barrier to a quick heat movement. So that's one of the differences between desert and rainforest. So they form a barrier to um, radiation of heat. Uh, they also, if you can imagine, uh, they're sitting on top of this low pressure area. Now, imagine when the water vapor, when, when water is uh, transpired, uh, energy is used to do it. It's like boiling a kettle. When water vapor turns back into water, heat is given off. So there's heat given off up here which as the water vapor turns into water vapor or into water you've got, you've got this warm area here 
also it, uh, there is less material now because water vapor uh, water droplets take up less space than water vapor and the droplets are falling down when they get to I don't know three or four millimeters uh, size to start falling down so there's I think what we have here is an area of instead of this circling air thing we've got an area where the uh, moisture from the ocean can flow up at maybe two to four kilometers high maybe two to five we have this area where the flying rivers go through now the um, biotic pump idea uh, was uh, it, it was come up with by uh, two Russian physicists in about 2003-2004 and flying rivers so this is the flying river is uh, a name for what's going on above the forest that was um, provided by a Brazilian uh, uh, weather scientist. So we know it happens and we know a lot of water get carried in way into the forest uh, thousands of kilometers in it's just as well as it's the coast where the normal theories, the theories before the biotic uh, pump predict that there be less moisture further inland but it actually stays the same even rises as you go further inland and part of the reason is the trees are extremely good at uh, uh, using the rain before it gets into rivers and um, transpiring it again so that this water falls gets transpired it falls again and gets transpired and the gradual inland flow of moisture uh, takes it further and further inland faster than the rivers can take it away and the Amazon River takes uh, it, it's a lot of water because even though it's not all getting to the ground the Amazon River uh, moves about one seventh of all of the fresh water uh, that's going to the sea in the world so it's, qu it's, it's quite significant anyway I'm going to leave it at that and see how it's Turns out. Thank you.